Hi everyone. In this video, we'll learn how 3D scenes are projected to form 2D images. Suppose you want to produce an image of this tree. You could just place a screen in front of it. Will this work? Well, rays of light from the tree will hit the screen. But each point on the tree reflects light in many directions. So we'll end up with a greenish brown smudge. And if there's other light in the scene, that will wash out our resulting image. You can fix this by building a box around the screen with a small hole in front. This filters out most of the rays, so only a few get through and produces a much clearer image. This is called a pinhole camera, and you can make one at home. We'll start by finding a white surface to be our screen. This white door will do. On the other side is a glass door and some trees. This is the scene we'll be photographing. Let's cover up the door with this tarp, like this, and poke a hole through it. Now when we look at the wall in front of it, we see an image. It's upside down, so let's flip it vertically. This is a pretty good image of the tree, and you can even see the blue sky and the water. Compare with the photo through the door. That's pretty cool. You can even create a pinhole camera with your hand. Hold it up on a bright day and look at the shadow you cast on the ground. This circle is actually an image of the sun. You probably don't believe me, right? I can prove it to you. Just try it during a solar eclipse. This is what the sun looked like when I took the photo that I'm about to show you. And here's a photo of my shadow. This is clearly an image of the sun. Neat. In fact, there are little pinholes everywhere. You just don't notice them normally. Here's the shadow underneath a tree during the eclipse. The gaps between the leaves form little pinhole cameras, and you can see little partially eclipsed suns everywhere. So next time you look down and see a shadow like this, you'll know you're looking at pictures of the sun. All right, let's get back to our image on the door. You may have noticed it's a bit blurry. This is a basic problem with pinhole cameras. Going back to our figure, the hole lets a narrow beam of light through. This creates a little spot of color on the screen. Let's call this hole the aperture. These spots overlap and get added together. The result is a blurry image. And if you increase the size of the aperture, the dots get bigger and there's even more blur. The aperture size also affects how bright the image is. You can get a sharper image with a smaller aperture, but it also becomes dim as less light gets through. Each point on our object reflects a lot of light, but only a tiny fraction makes it through the aperture. What if we could refocus all those rays onto a single point on the screen? That's what a lens does. For now, suppose the lens is huge, as big as the tree. This will help us see what's going on a bit better. Light travels more slowly in glass than in air. This causes the light ray to bend when it enters the lens, an effect known as refraction and it bends again when it exits. A convex lens like this is designed with a special shape that makes all these rays converge on the other side at a single point. So if you put the screen here, then that point will be in focus. The screen can be replaced with film or a sensor array. For now on, we'll just call it the image plane. But suppose a bug enters the scene. Its rays converge behind the image plane, so the bug appears out of focus like this. Well, actually the image is exposed this way. We just flip it for convenience. How do we get a clear image of the bug? Well, let's try moving the image plane back to where the rays converge. This works. We now get a nice sharp image of the bug. Well, at least the bug's head. Its back is still a bit out of focus. And you can see that the tree is really blurred out. The rays from the tree converge pretty far in front of the image plane. So what if we want both the bug and the tree to be in focus? Is that even possible? Well, we can get pretty close. The trick is to introduce an aperture. Just like with a pinhole camera, this lets only some of the light rays pass through. And the smaller the aperture, the sharper the image. Here's what the image looks like with a small aperture. As we widen the aperture, everything away from the bug's face goes out of focus. The term for this is depth of field. A wide aperture results in a narrow depth of field, 
only a narrow area around the bug's face is in focus. Making the aperture smaller increases the depth of field, so a wider range of the scene is in focus. Let's pause and take a look at our image. There's something pretty weird about it. This bug is almost as big as a tree. What the heck is going on? Stay tuned for part two.